I've been doing faceless YouTube automation for 100 days and I can tell you that most of what you've been told is lies. The penny dropped for me 8 days after I started my faceless YouTube business. And right here, right now, we're gonna debunk these lies because only those who know them will end up making money with YouTube. I'm also gonna take you under the hood of my YouTube business, how much we've spent, how much we've made, the process, what the team looks like. And finally, I'm gonna show you the future because there is a shift on the horizon. Change is coming and only those that are ready to capitalize are gonna take the lion's share. The first lie you've been told is in the name. I once ran a business that was semi automated. We ran Facebook ads, got people to visit our website. If they signed up for our website, they were then enrolled in an email sequence that we built on ConvertKit, where we sent them very carefully worded emails convincing them to buy our product. It was all automated using software and it was a dream business. And around eight days into my YouTube automation journey after I've launched my first video, I was simultaneously tweaking our next video, looking at a script and recruiting a thumbnail designer. At that moment, I realized that this YouTube automation business is about as automated as taking and whoever came up with the name of YouTube automation should be shot. Running a YouTube channel involves very little software and an awful lot of people. Currently, we're working with channel managers, scriptwriters, thumbnail designers, editors, animators, and we're just a basic channel. You can eventually automate many elements of this process using a tool called Zapier, like the professionals do, but you need to remember that these professionals are in this industry for a very long time, and they're probably spending tens of thousands of dollars to automate some of these processes. We'll talk later about how you can streamline this process in YouTube automation, but for now, don't get fooled by the name. We're just gonna refer to it as my faceless YouTube business from now on. Time to see the second line in action. I would consider myself a relatively okay operator. I started a six figure business in four months having no employees. And I worked ridiculously hard to do that. YouTube automation is no different. We currently have four people on our team and I can tell you one thing for nothing, we work a lot more than 20 minutes per week. Anyone who thinks they can build a 5K a month income stream with 20 minutes of work per week is delusional. Think of these channels as babies. If you take care of them when they're young, they'll take care of you when you're old. The third lie. Start making $100 per day fast with no experience. Oh, fuck. Let's focus on the no experience bit. Story time. My first startup was an AI software business that helped high school students figure out what they wanted to do with their life. And because I was fresh out of school myself, I thought that I was 80% of the way there to success. And I soon realized that just because I knew the solution did not mean I knew how to deliver the solution. Everything took five times longer and cost five times more because we didn't have a clue what we were doing. And in the same way, just because you watch a lot of YouTube does not mean you know how to set up a successful YouTube channel. 99% of the time, you're gonna have to earn your industry credit before you start to see results. Industry credit is something that you earn when you work in an industry. The less you have, the less you earn. The more you have, the more you earn. When I started my first YouTube channel, the one you're currently watching, I had zero industry credit and it took me 12 months before I earned my first dollar. With my second channel, I had 18 months of industry credit already built up. And as a result, we got monetized within two weeks and we started earning a lot more than what I currently make on this channel. Please do not let this turn you off starting a YouTube business in the first place. Yes, the barrier to entry is quite low, which is great because you can get started on a low budget with no experience, but don't expect this to work straight away if you're a YouTube virgin. Expect to earn some industry credit. If you're still here, great. Now you've been exposed to some of the lies you've been told. Now it's time to position you for success. Here are six pieces of advice I have for anybody starting a faceless YouTube business. First one might be a bit controversial, but if this is your first channel, do not worry about the niche and do not worry about making money. Create a channel in something you're interested in and focus all of your effort on getting the process right, understanding the game a little bit more and getting the perfect team in place. Understand your spending, your union and economics and get all of your documentation in place. And you know you're ready to graduate from this when you're able to produce a high quality video that you're happy with at a cadence that you want to release at. Our goal was to get to one really good video per week and I completely underestimated how much work it would take for us to get there. Initially, I thought we'd get there within two weeks of starting. In the end, it took us three months. There are a lot of moving parts that you're gonna have to figure out, but the best part about it is that once you do have it figured out, scaling to more profitable niches and new channels is gonna be easy. Once you have this down, now you can focus on your niche. And we're completely contrasting the first point here 
But choosing your niche at this point is the most important decision you're going to make in a YouTube business for two reasons. Reason number one is that if you're to be successful on YouTube, you need some form of a competitive advantage. And one competitive advantage that works across all industries, all niches, is called first mover advantage. First mover advantage basically means you're the first person to do something. And if you're able to create your own niche, you will have first mover advantage. Instead of starting a YouTube channel on basketball, where there are probably hundreds of thousands of channels, why don't you niche down a little bit more and say the business of basketball or contracts? This instantly separates you from the pack and you know you've done this well when your channel can't be compared with anyone else's. If you use your niche to become an instigator of a trend, what generally happens is that you will get most of the attention available and those who are late to the party will get nothing. The second reason why the niche is the most important decision you're gonna make is to do with how much money you make. One of our first videos has around 870,000 views. And because the revenue we're making per thousand views in that video is only 66 cents, we've made 575-ish euro from that video. If instead we decided to focus this video on a niche like finance, where the RPM is around 15 euro, we'd have made 8,600 and I don't even want to know. Once you've had your process down, choose your niche very carefully. Clearly define the format of your content from the very start. I was watching a draft of our fifth video and I was watching it and I felt... Nothing. It just looked like a generic cash cow YouTube automation video. And the reason it felt so generic was because we never clearly outlined our channel stamp. Our brand. What makes us different from every other YouTube channel on the platform? And how is a scriptwriter and editor supposed to notice if we never clearly defined it from the outset? So before you start your channel, ask yourself, what format will the audience I'm targeting want to consume? So come up with a list of rules, assets, and guidelines, and put it into a doc. Because if somebody ends up leaving your team, that new team member can then just be sent that doc, and instantly they know exactly what the video they're to produce, what the video they're gonna produce looks like. Number four, if you want to make money from YouTube directly, I fundamentally believe you should not be doing YouTube shorts. I tried this in the past and I paid somebody quite a lot of money to do this for me and it didn't work. Not because he didn't do a good job, but because I think it's fundamentally broken. And it's broken because of the quality of attention. If you asked me to name five TikTokers, I probably couldn't remember one piece of content from any of them. Whereas if you asked me to name five of my favorite YouTubers, I could probably list off every single video they've ever released. Oh, what a purely because I've watched their content for longer and formed a much better relationship with them. And at the end of the day, that relationship is what's monetized in one way or the other. It's true a loyal audience. And in my opinion, you rarely get that with short form. I have done quite a lot of YouTube courses. And even though the content is very good and very well ran, they only get you so far. You reach a saturation point. And like everything, at that point, the only thing that's going to improve you is by doing the thing. So if you want to do this, fair enough, you can consume content, but you're really not going to learn a lot until you start doing it. If you want to do it, enough with the bullshit excuses, do it. Don't let yourself get in your own way. I think this is the spice that very little YouTube businesses are doing, and I think it's the reason why myself and my business partner, John, are going to be quite successful in this niche. Because to us, this isn't just a YouTube channel or a side hustle or a way to make a bit of extra money. To us, this is a startup. We're treating this as if we're building the next Airbnb or Uber. I, I know that's a silly comparison, but to us, this is a five year game. And we're setting this up right now as we mean to go on over the next five years. And if you play the game long enough, you will eventually win. And that's what we're doing. Now let's take you under the hood of our business. So far, myself and John have invested around 5K into the business and we've burned through around half of it. We break our expenses up into two sections, people and subscriptions. These are all our subscription costs and we'll keep our people costs private, but you know, if you do the maths hard enough, you'll figure it out. In 100 days, we've released eight videos. Our first two went viral and we clocked up 1.5 million views in a relatively short space of time. This gives me mixed feelings because after we took off, it died down. And 100% of our growth have come from 25% of the products that we created. And you can take a bit of comfort in the fact that we've kind of demonstrated Pareto's principle, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't affect the momentum of what we've been doing as a team. Because it's very discouraging to see your 48 hour live view count go from 148,000 views to 2,000 views. 
but when you treat this like a startup and have a longer term vision, it's very easy to distance yourself from the short term success and failures. 100 days in, we have made around 1700 euro in AdSense revenue, got plenty of brand deal offers that we rejected, but right now we're not even focusing on either of those numbers because we're more focused on getting our process about as smooth as a baby's bottom. I'm quietly confident, well, not quietly confident anymore, but I'm confident that we have hundreds of thousands of euros worth of ideas in the video pipeline. However, none of these ideas mean shit if we can't execute on them, which is why it's so important, again, to get your process right. If we do this, the money will sort itself out. Now I wanna show you the future because the way we run our YouTube business now is absolutely not the way we're gonna be running it in two years time. Remember when I mentioned that the person who came up with the name YouTube automation should be shot? Well, I think pretty soon that business name is gonna fit quite well. And it all comes down to AI. Most likely you haven't heard of this term before. So let me fill you in on what I'm thinking. I think somebody is gonna figure out how to utilize AI to create content like we've never seen before. And I for one want to be part of that minority that makes the majority. If you happen to want the same, click on the link in the description, put your email in and let's do exactly that.